we continue our grasp of getting to 2200 when we're in this very tricky range of 2000 to 2200 and players are good here they know their openings they don't blunder as much um, they uh, have some good ideas in the middle games but there are still some common mistakes we can pick up on which these are aimed at doing now throughout this speed run I've been sticking with the Jabava London which I, I'm going to do here because I like the opening it's the latest ginger GM release you can buy that I don't know how many hours it is about what was it I uh, can't even remember how many hours our last course was it's a lot of hours like 13 14 on, on the latest theory in this opening on gingergm.com this is stage one of the Jabava London and we're playing porridge with raisins very healthy uh, start to the day there and um, in this position in 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 our course we're recommending two ideas this one is our main idea so let's stick with this move my opponent playing very quickly and he may well know the main ideas here which is fine and the main idea is not to take here because he can get in a bit of trouble actually in this variation even though he's playing very quickly now is this move and then bishop here one way that could cause him issues so I can take here and then check and he has to put his king on e7 that looks very pleasant for me um, this check immediately I guess is met by bishop here but I know I give up the bishop but putting the king here has got to be a tempting idea even b4 is not something which can be sniffed at because I do like this bishop as well let's have a look takes takes check king e7 how do I follow that up? It's not clear I have a follow up, but I've also got to think, how will he develop these two pieces? Because if he can't go bishop d7, he can never develop. So if I go knight e2 there, a6, bishop a4, b5, takes, rook takes. How is that? It doesn't look so bad for him, funnily enough. Takes, takes check it feels like his position should be worse than that so am i now going back to this idea i don't know okay let's let's go for it let's go for it. let's see how it ends out so we're going to give this bishop up we're going to give him a check and this forces his king to come forwards and i think he's got to play these two moves to get out of it now i was thinking i'd try and bring my knight around to win this pawn then he will always have f5. The other idea is to play f3 and try to bring the knight out. That might be... Let's try this one. And one of the reasons I've done this is because I'm trying to make it hard for him to develop. But he will probably crack upon the right plan as they do at this level. And it seems to me like the idea of going b5 is, is, is a good idea on my opponent's part. Uh, and he should be playing this. Otherwise, his pieces are going to be locked in forever. And this is the one reason I was a little bit doubtful about giving up my bishops like this. Okay. And he's trying to bring his bishop out here and then rook over here. Okay. This is a risky plan, I feel, on his behalf. Because he's still got some bad development. Let's castle, because it brings my last piece in. And also now, I have knight g5, which I'm going to play immediately not just to create a threat here but to centralize my knight so he's playing very quickly and now are there any tactics well, this move and he will take that pawn i mean i was hoping i had something like this but there's not a good follow-up okay let's let's we'll have to give this pawn up and get very interesting when i play c3 but then it will play f5 hmm. Have I not done this correct? Why didn't he grab that pawn? What what you always need to do, you know, is play the most critical moves, no matter who you're playing. And whenever I watch people who've got really good at chess, they've always played what looks like dangerous moves. And my opponent could have grabbed that pawn there. This is the only way to get better. Really, don't ever play safety first. Never. Always play with, you know, it's the only way to get better. You look at all the top players, that's the way they played. Okay, anyway, back back to back to this. Now, my whole knight idea, I'm not sure was correct, but we can now at least play c3. But we have the idea of coming in here. 
Is it going to go F5? Okay, let's just play C3 so I don't lose a pawn anymore. And we have an interesting position here. I mean, I'll be very interesting to look at this afterwards and see what the correct move in the opening is to play. Um, so I know in future um, it will be part of my course, I'm sure. So I might have to look it up in my course, but we'll have a brief look in the opening. Maybe this bishop takes b8 wasn't right. Now, I expect I still have an advantage here because my piece is a better place, but it's not clear by any means. And with his last move, he's now aiming to get his bishop to some good square. But this does open up this diagonal for my bishop. And it feels like, as his bishop's coming out anyway, this guy's done his job here. And it should and could drop back because we've got new targets. So let's bring it back here. And we've got to keep putting pressure on him. Again, like I said earlier, don't play the safe options. Always go for, always go for the most testing options, the moves that are going to really test your opponent. Had my opponent grabbed on B2, this would have been a completely different ball game because now I think he's getting in a lot of trouble. I mean, I've got knight here, and if bishop here, I've got knight takes here. Uh, and his position might even be creaking. I think it was just this one passive move. Again, I just say this time and time again to people. I see this. This is maybe an error at this rating range, which I see far too often. And he might, you know, I'm not saying this is over. He might better come in here and take here. But it, it's just the principle is avoid passivity if there's an option of activity. You only go passive in chess as a last resort, I feel. I mean, in certain openings, they're a bit more like, you know, stodgy, but they're never passive. If you have a chance, a, a safe chance to grab that activity, then I think you should always do that. And, and this was his one opportunity. And now, now it just feels like he has a lot of problems. Uh, he might better play f6, actually. Takes, and then come with the rook here. Okay, so he's bringing his bishop in as a counterattack. Now this seems like quite an active square for my rook. Um, I want to keep it on the open file, don't I? So yeah, let's bring it in here, supported by the pawn. And now I think I should take this one because we're keeping this idea open. So he's come around, but I'm hoping after rook f6, this, this is the big the big issue he's going to have. But I also got rook d5, and he has a lot of pieces on pre. So he played this quite confidently, but... Okay, let's do a little calculating. So rook here... Is that really working for him? It just feels like it shouldn't work. I can take there... Okay, I think we can play this. Rook f6 is tempting as well, but why not attack as many pieces as possible? So rook f8... I have many tempting moves. Take here, take here, check. And then we win a pawn. There's one tempting idea. But taking here, check first. So this is rook h8. Check, king here. I come back, check. King c6. And then I bring this one in. That's got to be good. And then bishop b6, rook f6. Yeah, this is still good for me. He's in a lot of trouble here. He's got a rook and a bishop and a pawn all on pre. Uh, and it all started from playing this passive move. And he's tried, it's funny because he's trying to go on active now. So he clearly has the right ideas, but he just missed that one chance of doing it. And I think loose pieces drop, loose pawns drop. And he's got a lot of loose pieces and pawns in, in this position. Uh, has porridge with raisins. Like I say, healthy start to the day there. I had a I had a bacon sandwich today, so I, I can't claim I can't claim to be that healthy today. And I had a bacon and sausage sandwich and egg yesterday. Um, and I did try to go like vegan vegetarian for a while. And I I I don't eat a lot of meat, but the last couple of days have been terrible. Got to cut down my meat, man. But I do I do love it. I do love a bit of meat now and again. This is the problem. It's not good, is it? love a sausage sandwich or an, or a bacon sandwich they're just like it's just a, it's just another worldly thing beautiful okay right while i was thinking about what sandwich i'm gonna eat i probably didn't calculate this line 
quite as deeply as maybe I should have because I've got bacon sandwiches on the brain. But hang on a minute, is there something like this here? Takes, takes, check. Ooh, sexy. King here. Ooh, ho, ho, ho. Oh, that thought of sausages. I think this works. I think this is a, I think this is a beauty. Check. It's not surprising because I have all my pieces working well. So check takes double check. He either comes here or here. Knight check. He comes here. Rook f7 mate. Boom! That is one hell of a sexy move. Oh yeah, I deserve a sausage sandwich after that. I'm not going to have one. I'm going to cut down on my meat. I know it's bad, but that is so nice. That's a beautiful finish. King here, knight, knight g5 checkmate. King to e8. Well, this one, I hope I've calculated this right. I wasn't going to look like a right wally. Double check. So he only has two squares to go to, here or here. Knight check, and then rook f7. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. And he didn't even want to show it. Yeah, so he resigns. So, for example, he has to go to one of these two squares. Doesn't matter which one. Because, well, okay. We're going to go knight check. And then when he comes here, we go rook f7 checkmate. Oh, that was, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was quite sexy, I have to say. Let's check out this opening before we, uh, before we go in there. Um, pop open the champagne with the sausages. And the bacons. And the eggs. What else do you guys like for breakfast? I mean, that is a proper English breakfast. So we got, anyway, so we're following this and we got to a position that I know is good for white. But after e6, this idea I'm not 100% convinced with. I will go and have a look at my uh, course, my Ginger Gem course after this, just to remind myself. Um, and maybe I'll go and check it on GHS. We're uploading the course to GHS as I speak. Um, but in hindsight, maybe I should just be going B4 here. Then. Maybe just B4. Game on. Because even though this, this idea that I play Bishop takes B8 is quite tempting. It's kind of like a bit of an odd position. Because he has a lot of potential, these guys. So it's weird. Weird position. And his one mistake was around here. I should probably be playing like c3 or b4. This move was a little bit artificial. I forgot about this. And now he should have taken on b2. Every other move seemed to give me a pleasant game. Had he taken here the active move, everything is up for grabs. Yes, I can come in. Yes, I have some pressure. Yes, I can try to trap his bishop, but you've got to play fearlessly. And that's where he went wrong. Like and subscribe. Help me get to 100,000 subscribers. You know you want to. Come on. Just give me a little bit of help there. Just a tad. Yeah, press that button. Press the button. Press the button. Mm -hmm.